Hi everyone, I'm Emily from the Milwaukee Public Library and thank you for joining me for this simple science project. Today we'll be doing a couple easy experiments that involve vision, that sort of approximate the testing that you have done when you visit the eye doctor. This project is appropriate for school age kids, but just a heads up that younger children might need some help from a grown up. I was inspired to do this project after reading about the life of Dr. Patricia Bath. I read these two library books. The first is The Doctor with an Eye for Eyes, the story of Dr. Patricia Bath. And the other is a collection for a little bit older readers called Changing the Equation, 50 plus US black women in STEM. So features a lot of great black female pioneers, including Dr. Bath. So, Dr. Bath is an inspiring person. She loved science from the time that she was a little kid, and a gift of a toy chemistry set when she was a kid from her mom really lit the spark of curiosity that carried throughout her life and her career. But despite her enthusiasm and her smarts, her road to becoming an ophthalmologist was not easy. She faced a lot of racism and sexism, and in the 60s and 70s, she was often the only black person and often the only woman in her medical school classes. Um, she had to fight really hard all the time to prove her worth and her value, um, but she persevered and she was able to achieve some amazing things that still inspire um, the medical profession today. So what are some of the things that she achieved? Well, she identified rates of higher blindness um, afflicting patients of color. She co-founded the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness. She was awarded the first medical patent to a black woman in the United States. And she pioneered something called community ophthalmology, which brought eye care out of hospitals, out of the doctor's office, and into the community for testing in schools, churches, child care centers, and even in people's homes. Well, sadly, Dr. Bath died last year but I think her legacy lives on. She's an example of a person who truly used her gifts, her talents to create a better life for others. Again, you can read about Dr. Bath's life in these two books, which are available from our collection, the Milwaukee Public Library, and also digitally as an ebook on Hoopla, which you can access for free with your library card. For our experiments today, you don't need many supplies and hopefully they're pretty easily found around your home. We'll need some paper, and I'm just using post-its today, but any kind of paper will do. Scrap paper, lined paper, index cards, whatever you've got lying around. A couple different colors of markers, and if you don't have markers, that's okay. Colored pencils should work. Optionally, scissors. You might use those, and if you're going to use scissors, please get your grown-ups help so you can stay safe. And then tape, and I'm just using clear scotch tape, but masking tape would work fine as well. All right, let's get started with experiment number one. For our first experiment, we're going to look at depth perception, which is our ability to see things in 3D or in three dimensions. So depth perception tells us how close or far things are. Now, without depth perception, it can be really tricky to navigate the world. Imagine what it would be like to ride your bike safely if you couldn't determine how close or far objects were around you. So to test our depth perception today, go ahead and grab some paper and a marker and we'll get started. So with your piece of paper, whatever kind you have works just fine. Mine's a post-it. I want you to draw a smiley face. Mine's going to be a regular smiley face, but yours can certainly be any emotion that you want it to be. Now, I have a sticky backing on mine because it's a post-it, but if yours isn't sticky, go ahead and use some tape. And I want you to take that piece of paper with a smiley and put it on a wall in front of you at your eye level. So you should be looking right directly at it in front of you, about as tall as you are. Take a step back about two feet. Take your pointer finger and put it about halfway between your body and the smiley face on the wall. First thing to test your depth perception, I want you to focus your sight on your finger. Not at the smiley face, but both of your eyes should be looking at your finger. What you should see if your depth perception is working as it should, if your eyes are working together in that process of convergence, you should see two smiley faces kind of hovering on either side of your finger, a little bit blurry. Go ahead and really focus in on your finger. 
And hopefully you're seeing almost like those smiley faces are dividing and you've got two. And to make it a little bit more clear, because of course you can't really see through my eyes here, here's an image of what you should be seeing if your depth perception is working as it should. Great, now let's try something a little bit different. Go ahead now and focus your attention not on your finger, but on the smiley face. So almost looking past your finger, both of your eyes looking at the smiley face, again with your finger about halfway between your body and the smiley face on the wall. And if you focus on the object in the distance, the smiley face, what you should be seeing if your, your depth perception is working as it should are two fingers this time. So you should be seeing you know, your regular finger and then kind of adjacent to it, like a, a blurry mirage of it as well. And again, that's hard to see here. You can't see through my eyes here on camera. So I'm gonna give you a little visual what that would look like. Now let's test our field of vision or how wide of an area we can see when we focus on a fixed point. It looks at our central vision and our peripheral vision. Field of vision tests will identify any blind spots. And although we all have blind spots, significant or unusual blind spots might indicate something like cataracts or even just issues with one's eyelids. This is a really fun experiment to do with another person, so feel free to go grab your grown-up, a friend, or a sibling for this one. You can test their vision, they can test yours, but you can do it alone too, and that's how I'm going to demonstrate it. So here's the things we need before we get started. Scrap paper. In this case, I'm using white scrap paper that I've cut into squares. My post-it notes. A few different colors of markers or colored pencils will work. And if you don't have sticky-backed paper like post-its, some tape will work. On the scrap paper that's white that I've cut into squares here, I drew a couple things you can see. Two different short words. Any words will do, but you can use mine if you'd like. Around them I did a shape, two different shapes, and those shapes are in two different colors. That's because as we move an object through our field of vision to test where we can detect it, we are looking for these four different things. We're looking for movement, so as the object moves into your field of vision, when you can detect the movement. We're looking for the color, we're looking for the shape, and then we're looking for the text, when you can actually read it. Where within your field of vision when the object appears can you read that text? And because if you think of a circle as being 360 degrees, just to kind of measure where we detect those things within our field of vision, I've gone ahead and done a few post-its with degrees on them. So zero degrees will be our, our central vision right in front of us. 45 degrees, and then 90 degrees. You'll need a kind of long, flat surface for this. I don't have a good table at home, so I'm going to use a bed. Um, but the floor, a long table, anything like that should work. So I'm at my nice flat surface, in this case my bed, and I've marked out in half a circle in degrees, my central vision, zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees here. You can go ahead and mark out, you know, even the full circle if you want to on this side, behind you, whatever you like. You don't even have to mark, but I think it's kind of fun to pinpoint where within your field of vision you're able to detect these four things. Now remember, we're looking for the movement of an object, when you can detect that, and then also shape, in this case a square, color, in this case purple, and then when you can actually read the text, and I wrote cat here. So this is where it's fun to include somebody else because I wrote this, I know what's on this object. As it comes into my field of vision, I kind of have a one-up in that. I know it says cat, I know it's purple, I know it's a square. So if somebody else does it for you, it's a surprise and you are you know, not cheating, you are truly detecting those things. And same thing if you create it for somebody else and you're testing them, you know that they can't cheat. Um, so you can go ahead and cover one eye if you want to, if that helps a little bit. I'm gonna keep my eyes uncovered in this case and really try not to cheat. To find your central vision, again, I've marked it out there with zero degrees, but you can just put your arm straight out in front of you, put up your thumb if you'd like to, and that is where you're going to be focusing your vision the entire time. Please do not peek out to the side. That's not truly testing your field of vision. That can be hard. That's why it's good maybe to have another person to, to watch and observe and make sure that your eyes don't look off to the side. And again, you can cover one eye if you want to. So I'm gonna get ready. 
There we go, there's my central vision. I'm gonna look at that zero degrees or my thumb as I go. I'm gonna have my object facing me so that as it enters my field of vision, I would be able to detect that shape, color, and text. I'm gonna go way out here so I can't see it at all and move slowly and surely as I look straight ahead, no looking to the side. All right, already right away, I see the movement of that object right at about 90 degrees as it's entering my field of vision. So you could mark that if you wanted to, write it down, and that's pretty good, I think. All right, focusing again, see where I can see the shape, color, and text. All right, right about there, you know, before I get to 45 degrees, I can see that it is purple going to see if I can see a shape and text. All right, right about there, right past 45 degrees, I can see that it's a square. You know, not surprising that actually reading the text is going to be the most involved thing, and I'm not yet there. So again, looking ahead. And right about there, at almost my central vision, I can see that it's cat. You know, it wasn't a unique word to me. I'm the one that wrote it, but hopefully I was being truthful, looking straight ahead. And it doesn't surprise me that it pretty much had to be right in front of me for me to read it. I have corrective lenses. You know, my vision's not the greatest. It doesn't surprise me. But it would be interesting to see where yours, when you're able to detect text and actually read that. Of course, you can continue this maybe with a new word, a new shape, a new color, with the other eye coming in like this. And then just continue to experiment with different words, different shapes, different colors, different sizes, different speeds, uh, things like that to kind of test your field of vision. And of course, share it with a friend, a grown up, a sibling, makes it all the more fun. Thank you for watching today. I hope you had fun doing some vision experiments. And remember to check out these books about Dr. Patricia Bath, available at the library or digitally as an ebook on Hoopla, which you can access for free with your library card. See you next time. Bye.